so today I'm going to talk about vitamin K2 and some of the functions that go way beyond just dealing with bone formation. When we talk about vitamin K2, most people associate that with making your bones more solid and also removing the soft tissue calcium from the joints or the arteries and then driving that into the bone. And vitamin K2 works with vitamin D. But vitamin K2 does a lot more. As far as the function of bone goes, we might think it's just a structural scaffolding to hold everything together. But bone not only uh, provides a structural function, but it's vital in making immune cells. A lot of your immune cells originate from the bone marrow, but there's another interesting function. Your bone acts as an endocrine gland. It makes a hormone called osteocalcin. It has to do with a hormone that can affect your blood sugars. And it just so happens that vitamin K2 triggers this hormone. So vitamin K2 has the capacity of improving insulin resistance. And when I say improving insulin resistance, I'm not talking about worsening insulin resistance, I'm talking about making it better. Because vitamin K2 can increase insulin sensitivity. And there's so many people on this planet right now that have a problem with insulin resistance without being aware of it. So vitamin K2 can help stabilize your blood sugars and increase the output, the production of insulin from your pancreas. But it does other things as well. It has the capacity to suppress inflammation. Vitamin K2 is an anti-inflammatory vitamin. We know vitamin D is anti-inflammatory, but vitamin K2 can also help as well. Now, number four, vitamin K2 can decrease fat accumulation. Why? Because it helps to balance insulin. All right, number five, vitamin K2 can also increase the capacity of energy in your mitochondria when you exercise. Now, I have some personal experience on this one right here. When I take vitamin K2, 30 minutes before I go on a bike ride, I have much better endurance, especially going up hills. And number six, it can even increase testosterone. Now, realize if you're female, it's not going to increase testosterone beyond your normal levels, okay? So it's just gonna help balance testosterone. Now let's talk about the foods that are high in vitamin K2. NATO, which is fermented soybeans. Butter, if it's grass-fed. Yolk, as in egg yolk. Goose liver. Pepperoni, of course, without the nitrates. Salami, without the nitrates. Sausage. Sauerkraut. And certain cheeses, like Munster cheese, Gouda, Brie. Another one being Edam and hard cheese. The key is grass-fed cheese. Now, if you look at some of these foods like NATO and sauerkraut, K2 is made by a bacteria. It's part of the fermentation process. Now, if you look at some of these other ones, they're either coming from an animal fat or milk or an egg. But the animal originally ate grass, which has a lot of vitamin K1, and then converts it to K2 as a fat-soluble vitamin, and it gets stored in the fat. For more information about K2, check out this video right here.